to Professor McKinney for rescuing the Grolier in its hour of need and preserving it from extinction and making it bigger and better than ever. So I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about poetry for children and read some poetry aimed at kids, some of them, uh, some of the, the poems my own. Uh, and uh, it certainly goes without saying that poetry is valuable for children. Uh, it uh, gives them a notion of the language they don't get from prose with uh, a new and increasing vocabulary that comes over from poems. Um, I uh, talk about this in a little book called Knock at a Star, A Child's Introduction to Poetry, which I put together with the aid of my uh, wife, Dorothy, who can't be with us anymore. She passed away in March. Uh, and she uh, was uh, crucial in, in this book. Uh, Knock at a Star, the uh, name comes from uh, Robert Herrick's wish that sometimes before he ends up dead, he will knock at a star with his enchanted head. In this book, we uh, talked about how poetry uh, is best inhaled when you're very young, at least it's, a good, it's absorbed any time of life. <laughs> but the very young are really ripe for it. Uh, I was lucky in that my mother liked to read poems to me every night when I was going to bed. And the poems always came from uh, three sources. Uh, a Child's Garden of Verses by Robert Louis Stevenson, from Mother Goose, and from A.A. Uh, a. Mills, when we were very young, book of poems. Um, Robert Louis Stevenson's uh, great book uh, has really lasted well. There's one poem in it that doesn't get reprinted in modern editions as a rule about uh, the kid congratulating himself that he doesn't have to eat funny things such as foreign kids eat. But aside from that, the book is still lively and new. Uh, my favorite poem from it was The Swing. How do you like to go up in a swing over the air so blue? Oh, I do think it the pleasantest thing ever a child can do up in the air and over the wall till I can see so wide rivers and trees and cattle and all over the countryside till I look down on the garden green down on the roof so brown up in the air I go flying again up in the air and the wonderful thing about the poem courses among other trees the rhythm which uh, conveys the up and down. Uh, and uh, I, would, I was taught the great Mother Goose uh, Sometimes it's plain that we had a Mother Goose who was a native of Massachusetts, and she's buried downtown. But actually, uh, the character of Mother Goose and Mother Goose rhymes is much older than, than, than she would have been. Uh, it seems to have begun in France with Ma Mère Loy, my mother the goose, and the, the collection was put together in French, which then were translated into English. Uh, much of Mother Goose 
of course, is nonsense, like, hey, little diddle, the cat and the fiddle, the cow jumped over the moon. The little dog laughed to see such sport. The dish ran away with the spoon, which, of course, is quite impossible. <laughs> but there are realistic uh, Mother Goose rhymes, like, Jack be nimble, Jack be quick, Jack jump over the candlestick, which is entirely possible. Um, some of the Mother Goose rhymes are mysterious and even sinister, like Hinks, Minks, the old witch winks, the fat begins to fry, there's nobody home but Jumpin' Joan, Jumpin' Joan and I. Well, what's that all about? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Why is the, the, the frying of the fat somehow so threatening and menacing? Uh, <laughs> but that's one of the fascinations of, of the Mother Goose Rhymes, uh, as it is a, a fascination of all poetry, that some of the best poems we do not totally understand. Well. Uh, in the uh, Knock at a Star, uh, Dorothy and I uh, tried to, to, to show the different elements that make up a poem and uh, the different uses to which poems uh, may be put. Uh, they can make you smile, uh, as in uh, this poem by the Canadian poet Douglas Florian, at least it makes me smile, is called commas. Do commas have mamas who teach them to pause, who comfort and calm them and clean their sharp claws, who tell them short stories of uncommon commas and send them to bed in their comma pajamas. <laughs> Um, and of course, many poems are narratives, they tell, tell stories. Uh, one of the shortest story poems is surely this one by the great poet Anonymous. A peanut sat on a railroad track, his heart was all a flutter. The 515 came rushing by, toot toot, peanut butter. Poems can send messages. They uh, they share feelings, uh, and uh, but the feelings, of course, can be either happy, sad, or something in between. I think it was Auden who described poetry as uh, the clear expression of mixed feelings. Um, this poem, for instance, Christmas Morning by Carol Freeman. Christmas morning, I got up before the others and ran naked across the plank floor into the front room to see Grandma sewing a new button on my last year's rag doll. Poems help us understand people. They, they are about, of course, all sorts of different kinds of people. Uh, and and wh what, are, what are in poems? Uh, images, often, uh, in words conveying a sense of smell, hearing, sight, taste, or touch. For example, I, I go to uh, a poem by, by uh, John Updike, 
who wrote a lot for children as well as for adults, called September, the breezes taste of apple peel, the air is full of smells to feel, ripe fruit, old footballs, burning brush, new books, erasers, chalk and such. The bee has hive well honeyed hums, and mother cuts chrysanthemums. Like plates washed clean with suds, the days are polished with a morning haze. Uh, there's word music in that poem, and indeed some poems are big on, on word music, as a, another John Updike poem called Winter Ocean. Many main scud thumper, tub of male whales, maker of worn wood, shrub ruster, sky mocker, rave, portly pusher of waves, wind slave. Or this, uh, this uh, highly uh, musical poem by David McCord called The Picket Fence. The pickety fence, the pickety fence. Give it a lick, it's a pickety fence. Give it a lick, it's a clickety fence. Give it a lick, it's a lickety fence. Give it a lick, give it a lick, give it a lick with a rickety stick. Pickety, 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 pick. that uh, poems by their sounds can suggest what they're saying is an, another of their fascinations. <clears throat> this is a, a poem by James Stevens, the Irish poet, The Wind. The wind stood up and gave a shout. He whistled on his fingers and kicked the withered leaves about and thumped the branches with his hand and said, he'll kill and kill and kill and so he will and so he will. Well, one can analyze poems forever, but uh, they need mainly just to be read and possible heard out loud. Um, I'll read you just a, a few poems of mine. Real quick. I have a book called Exploding Gravy. This is the title poem, Exploding Gravy. My mother's big green gravy boat once thought he was a navy boat. I poured him over my mashed potatoes and out swam seven swift torpedoes. Torpedoes whizzed and whirred and wham. One bump smack into my hunk of ham and blew up with an awful roar, flinging my carrots on the floor. <laughs> Exploding gravy, that's so silly. Now all I eat is chili. Uh, oh, here's one about a vulture. The vulture is very like a sack, set down and left there drooping. His crooked beak and creaky back look badly bent from stooping down to the ground to eat dead cows so they won't go to waste, thus making up in usefulness for what he lacks in taste. <laughs> Read you just one one more of this, these called What We Might Be, What We Are. If you were a scoop of vanilla and I were the cone where you sat, if you were a slowly pitched baseball and I were the swing of a bat, if you were a shiny new fish hook and I were a bucket of worms, 
If we were a pin and a pin cushion, then we might be on intimate terms. If you were a plate of spaghetti and I were your piping hot sauce, we'd not even need to write letters to put our affection across. But you're just a piece of red ribbon in the beard of a Balinese goat. And I'm a New Jersey mosquito. I guess we'll stay slightly remote. Uh, I'm going to close with, with a song, uh, at least an attempt to sing a song that I wrote. It's called Great Great Grandma Don't Sleep in Your Treehouse Tonight. And it's about the, how the grandmother can't sleep in her treehouse because some wood eating ant chewed the tree down. Great, great grandma, don't sleep in your treehouse tonight. Don't swing on your rope and your tire. For your tree felt the bite of a greedy termite. Have a seat by the heat of the fire. Here's a big bowl of black bolts and nuts you can crack. Here's some cider to slide down your craw. Oh, what fun it'll be when we roast that old tree. None so tall stood an old Arkansas hee-haw. Thank you very much. history. But um, first, you know, so first a big welcome to all of you, the audience. You've kept us going for a long time now. Uh, and to the vendors, the performers, the readers, thank you, thank you. It's a labor of love. It's been said, the word has been used so many times, it doesn't sometimes make sense anymore. But if it weren't for this community over the years, I remember coming to Cambridge many years ago in Old Garden, the founder, and then later Louisa. So thank you. This is what has kept us going. You, our supporters, our friends. Uh, and also many thanks to the city of Cambridge. Uh, it's made it possible for us to close down the street today to Denise Gilson and Bill Manley of the Harvard Square Business Association for all their help. And uh, obviously thanks also to the Goliath staff, you know, to 
Elizabeth, Carol, my wife, you know, Celia, Andy, Olivia. Uh, you've done so much to keep us going in the past several years. And of course, uh, finally, uh, thanks to our field marshal, our organizer, Francine Lachance, who's uh, uh, worked tirelessly, night and day, to make this happen. Um, where is Francine? Is she here? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you all. and Elizabeth and, and over there someplace and Celia and Andy and Olivia. So I couldn't have done anything without all this help. Uh, of course, uh, why are we here? And obviously it's to celebrate. 90 years uh, is a long time. Uh, in the history of any one individual, of any one institution, it's a long time. And this place has been here in one, this one spot for 90 years. And I remember old garden you know, on the couch, and then we did a reading for him in Inman Square back in 72, and his leather club, and I'm Saroyan, you name it. And then, of course, uh, Louisa, you know, took over. I don't know if Louisa was going to come. You know, she was able to make it here. But Louisa able to, they were going to bring her. Uh, um, was my predecessor, and I guess uh, she hasn't been feeling too well. And somebody was going to try to bring her today to also acknowledge her, what she's done. Um, I don't want to take up any more of your time, but we all come to poetry for different reasons. You know, temperament, always felt that the songs that the nation sang. I was talking to an old friend, Trey Judge, and the pounds remark, whenever you find poetry, you have music and song. Whenever you have song and music, you got dance. So we're gonna be having some dance later on here. So the way that this uh, business comes around. As a young man coming from Africa many years ago, at Pomona, more than almost 60 years ago, uh, picking up the canto as a pound, you know, uh, and it's kind of interesting for me, you know, we all have our own little, little, little lead-ins. Uh, we had read about the Wars of the Roses at school boys in Africa. And here is Pound, then in England, picking up on that thing, that two door indeed is gone. And every rose, blood red, blanch white, that in the sunset glows, cries blood, 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 against the Gothic stone of England, as the Howard of Berlin goes and Berlin, sixty combined patrol to refer, and raise the white board times inquisitor seeking to know if you now root twist from York's head or belly of Lancaster. Growing up in Onisha, the royal kingdom, all I could remember then is that my translation of this music was in the idiom of dance. As the Obi of Onisha, the king came out to the public square during the Ophala festival and the royal drums, the insistent monosyllabic beat of the royal drums. And every road, that's what I saw as a young man, is the idiom of that music translated into the idiom of dance, which was what I understood. So we all make our own journeys in many, many different ways. And here, 60 years later on, this young villager from Africa living with this thing here. But we have all my friends, you know, Lloyd is here, you know, they, they, there someplace. So we have a lot to celebrate in common. The languages of the human tribes of the world, the music, the song that the nation sing. So we don't have to go to the mountains of faith. But in built into the, the, the ordinary language of the human tribes of the world, if we could open our ears and begin to symbolize this common world from the ground up with poetry, with music, that is all, that is all, that is all the plea one could make. So I will stop here and I would like to get this reading going, but thank you all from the bottom of my heart for coming. You've kept me going. <laughs>